Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. That was Asaf Adonai on piano with that lovely tune. What song was that? That's the theme to Winnie the Pooh. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Yeah. And you're going to be talking about him today, right? Uh, well, not Winnie, but it ties into my story. Ooh, nice. So we'll hear excellent. from him later. So, yeah. That's a nice little tease. It is, yeah. But happy Wednesday, everyone. We've got Martin Ross on our show today to talk about Tell Us Something. He's going to tell us things about yep. Tell Us Something yes. in and, a little while. And we have some city council, and they're talking about a storm um, water utility that Ooh. they're going to be put into implementing. So basically, you're going to have to pay more for water. Great. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more Property about that. Property taxes, water taxes. Oh, it's not even a tax. It's just part of your water bill. And it's, uh, I'll explain a little more about that. But it's still more money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so the weather is looking pretty nice this week. Um, it's it's all cooled down. Everything's basically cooled down about 15, 20 degrees. Mm-hmm. It's basically officially autumn or fall for some of you folks out there. Um uh, currently, it is 37 degrees outside. You have a high of 69, a low of 41. Um, Thursday, your high is going to be 74. Your low is going to be 42. Um, by this weekend, it's going to get pretty nice. Pretty highs in the 70s. Um, it's it's not too hot where you can't wear a sweater. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's going to be just right for you guys out there. But of course, if you want more information, go to uh, weather.gov to find out more information about um, that weather and more. Oh. But of course, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write out twice, and I'm too cheap to buy the license for wakeupmissoula.org <laughs> or .com. I don't know. I, I, is this a .com or .org? I, I, I sound pretty it's commercial when com. I... .com. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would you want to be a .org or .com? I, you know, I would like to be a .org. Okay. I, it doesn't really matter to me. We have a website. You can go to it. That's all that everyone needs to know. I would totally be a dot gov. People don't need to know if you're cheap or not. Or, or we'd probably be more of a dot tv. Dot tv. Yeah, because there's dot tv out there. Anyways, um, you can also like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter. You can like us at MCAT TV Missoula. And to find out more information, uh, you can like us on Facebook. And then you can go to MCAT.com. Org. MCAT.org. <laughs> I was hoping you'd do that. I know, I'm kind of messing up. I don't know. Sorry, you guys. Drop the ball on that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's Wednesday, middle of the yeah. week. It is middle of the week. Uh, we have Mark Moss on the show. Um, we did a live stream last night. Um, MCAT and um, Sentinel High School, they teamed up teamed up for their uh, media academy to bring you a uh, uh, high school volleyball between uh, Sentinel Spartans and Hellgate Knights. It was a cross town rival between the two teams, and if you get a chance, you can watch the the stream. It's on our website. It's on our Facebook page. We basically have the entire entire stream. It was really short and sweet. Um, you know, you already know who won. It's Sentinel. Sentinel yeah. beat them all yeah. three games in a row. It was barely anything. I, but I honestly got to say that the fans, Hellgate High School fans, beat the Sentinel fans. That's what I down. hear. That's what I hear. Uh, we had one of our high school friends hanging out here at MCAT. We've got a lot of high schoolers that hang out here. Yeah, they just come here. They're, they're, but, we get we have all the Hellgate High School kids come here to hang, uh-huh. and then we have the Sentinel kids to work, and the big, big sky kids stand in the corner and just wave. Yeah, so Maddie and I were talking about it, and she said that their student section is really, really fun. And their student section is crazy. But, um, so it makes sense that they would beat out Sentinel, but maybe their sports section isn't as good. Yeah, well. <laughs> they don't yeah. even have a varsity football team. Yeah, uh, Hellgate High School doesn't. Well, they say they have a varsity team. Um, I, I talked to them. I oh, know, I mean, a lot of them who are not on the team, who are on the team, or it was like, oh, we have varsity team. It's like, well, most of your varsity team members are small and like junior varsity size. Well, they're all JV. Um, what the, Maddie was talking to her, she said that they don't have a varsity team because they haven't won a game in like five years. Yeah, and there, there's a lot. Of, well, they, what they um, lack in their football team, they make up for in their uh, basketball team because exactly. their basketball team has made state like every year. And their lacrosse team, same thing. Yeah. Lacrosse team has made past six years in a row they made state. And Maddie is on the lacrosse team. Is she? Yeah, that's why she mentioned it. Little cutie. <laughs> I love those little high schoolers. Yeah, she's the she's the goon of the lacrosse team because lacrosse is intense. It's like yeah. hockey but without skating. So yeah. You don't need much. Uh, you just need to be able to. Um, jog and run and yeah. run around and just like wave a puck around. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Anyway, so we're, we're keeping <laughs> we're, Mar- we're, we're keeping people. Mark Moss waiting a little longer. <laughs> um, but we have a bunch of new um, videos for you guys. Um, this is the International Choir Festival. It will kick us off um, with some city band. Uh, the second part of our city band of our city band season. Nice. And then of course we learn. You guys can learn a little bit about um, farming in this. Uh, tonight as well so without further ado here is all the new clips and when we come back we'll have mark moss telling us something 
with the soil and this soil is really dry um, and one of the funny things about super dry soil is it tends to be hydrophobic which means that it repels water mm -hmm. so I like to give it a little sprinkle just to wet it down and then once it's wet I'll come back and soak it go so next workshop you can check on them and see how they're doing <laughs> See if we did a good job or not. Hey, everybody here with Mark Moss yes. to our right. Um, good morning. And you're going to tell us things about Tell Us Something. I am, yes. So what is this um, week's theme for Tell Us Something or this series theme? Tell Us Something is the opening event of the Montana Book Festival. Ooh. Okay. And we open on the 20th of this month, so that's a Tuesday. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Next Tuesday, and the theme is Fork in the Road. Oh, yeah. Nice. How many uh, people do you have? We have 10 storytellers, and they have 10 minutes to tell a true story from memory on that theme. Uh -huh. And I will um, help mitigate the people going over time. Um, <laughs> we're going to be playing music at 10 minutes uh, <laughs> to encourage them to gracefully exit the stage. Oh, yeah, because you and Noelle were talking earlier about the wrap it up box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she was talking about that whole Dave Chappelle skit. And yeah. yeah, it was. Wrap it up box is hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So you guys are just going to do some wrap it up music. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. That is such a great idea. Yeah. And it, like, I, I've been to a couple of Tell Us Lumbies and I've seen them, and there's definitely a bunch of long talkers. Yeah. It's like. It, it does take them a while to get to a point right. in their story as well, well because they're trying to they're, expand their story. They're well, trying because to, they're getting nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And so what is the process like? If I wanted to be a storyteller, what would the process for me be like? You would look at all of the themes and dates and find one that resonates with you and then sign up on a Google spreadsheet. And if we get on the sign up list, if we get more than 10, then you call a pitch line and you pitch your story. Mm. And from there, the advisory board and I sit down and listen to all the pitches, and we select uh, the ten storytellers that we'll have available. And what is in the pitches? Is it like a little synopsis? It's like uh, you have three minutes to record a summary version of your story. Mm. So I encourage people just to tell their story as if they were telling it, and then, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they only have three minutes, so... So yeah, so they really have to narrow it right. down. Yeah. So then once you've been accepted, what happens next? Then there is a workshop. Um, which actually is going to happen tomorrow. Um, that's a potluck style workshop. It's at my house. And we, all the storytellers come and, and we workshop their stories. Cool. Yeah. Nice. And so it's kind of like a preliminary hearing. Yeah. To, I, uh... <laughs> I, I don't, I encourage them not to over practice their stories and I try to get them to not write it out, but some people need. A little outline. And the nice thing about Tell Us Something is that they're telling their own personal stories. So they yeah. already know how it went down exactly. from yeah. their point of view. And yeah. I really liked your uh, last Tell Us Something. The, the, like, that's not how I remember it. Oh, that's yeah. not how it happened. That's not how yeah. it happened. It's like two people telling the same story. And I think that is like the, the best thing ever. I thought fun. that was great too. Yeah. It's like that one uh, Japanese movie where basically they have like five different story perspectives about that one guy. I can't remember the uh, Mandela kinda or like, something. Kind of like Cloud Atlas too. Cloud Atlas has like all those different <laughs> lifetimes, but it's one around one. Oh uh, yeah, it's. Cloud it, Atlas is great. It, it, I don't know. 
It's it's really long. But anyways. <laughs> oh, we're talking about telling something. Yeah, now you got all You got all sidetracked. <laughs> telling your own personal this stories. This happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there's a, oh, there's, oh, I was watching um, Cloud Atlas the other day, and I was like, oh my god, this is long. It's like, should I go to the bathroom now or later? I was just arguing with. Them. Anyways, <laughs> that's the story of me watching. Te- <laughs> all right. <laughs> and so you have a website. Tell us something. Dot org. Awesome. Yep, and okay. a Facebook page. What can people expect from your website? That is where you can stream all of the stories that have ever been told at Tell Us Something. Oh, um, you can learn more about Tell Us Something itself and um, some of the board members, the advisory board members, and um, upcoming events as well as workshops that might be coming available. Are you guys doing any events uh, uh, during the Montana Book Festival? Uh, we are at the opening event, so I guess that is during the yeah. book festival. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you guys kick it off. Yeah. That's really so cool. So beyond that, no. Yeah. And then how much is the entry fee? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Uh, $10 day of show, eight dollars in advance. And okay. tickets in advance can be purchased at the Um, Rock and Rudy's and the Top Hat Box Office. And the cool thing is if you go to the Top Hat Box Office, you can also get a little lunch. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Is there anything else you want to tell us? I think that's all I got. Before we let you go, yeah. Yeah. Do. Yeah, okay. that's great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks for joining. Well, great. thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, sir. Yeah, you bet. We'll be right back after this, everyone. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was too. You were too wrapped up in talking about it. Sergeant Greg Amison with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about bicycles riding on the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, which we see a lot because Missoula is a very bike friendly town. I would just like to let bicyclists know that they do have to yield to pedestrians on the sidewalk safely because they travel faster than a pedestrian, so they do have to do that in a safe manner. And then when you get to a crosswalk, you are actually required to slow your bicycle down to what would be called a pedestrian pace, and you cannot begin crossing until it's safe to do so. Missoula, how are you today? We are back and I've got some community events for your Wednesday. So, up first we've got family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics starting at 9.30 a.m. Um, and this is just for ages 1 to 12 years. They, it's a supervised um, area with lots of foam pits and trampolines and all the fun th- stuff that you can do. It's uh, only $10 if you're a non-member but $7 if you are a member. Preschool Playgroup is at Ruth Zachra Sports Center at 10. This is for ages walking to five years. They set up different activities and stations around the gym and the parents and children get to rotate and choose what they want to do. We have open hours in our makerspace at the Missoula Public Library at 10 o'clock. Uh, from 10 to 6, you can learn how to use the equipment or work around a project of your choice. They also have beanbag toss. That's going to be at the Children's Museum of Missoula. That's at 11. Um, and then at Spectrum Discovery Area, the Discovery Bench is sound, and their brain lab is, ouch, my brain. That's also at 11. And their Science Sprouts is apples, and the Science Sprouts is a younger children program for ages two to five. In the Missoula Public Library, we've got a couple, a couple more events. Uh, Pokemon Go, they're teaching a class on that at 12.30 today. Um, so you'll be able to Download the app, learn the basics of the Pokemon Go game, and then they'll take a walk around the library to check out nearby Pokemon, which is just super cute. That's a great, I think that's a great idea. So you can call 721-2665 if you guys want to get involved in that. I think, um... I think the next one would be like Pokemon Addiction. Yeah, Pokemon Addiction. <laughs> Pokemon Help Addiction Class. Because when that thing started, it just like took off like crazy. I remember when I was just like in the, in the 90s, I was all about the show, you know. The show was amazing. I, they did it. It was such a good story. And then it was like, then when they started doing other... Like Digimon. Yeah, <laughs> well, Digimon definitely, definitely capitalized on it. But with everything, there's always something that capitalizes on the main movie. It's just mm-hmm. like, oh, Captain America, let's watch uh, Colonel uh, Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Colonel Sanders. <laughs> with the franchise awards or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pokemon Go addiction is serious. It really is, yeah. you guys. Yeah. 
So curb your addiction, or else maybe you can uh, start it by going to this event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also at the public library, we've got an afternoon matinee. It starts at two o'clock. Um, you can call 721-2665 to find out the title of the movie. That'll be in their large meeting room. They've got middle school writers that starts at 3.30. This is for writers in grades six through nine to give and get some good feedback. Um, and that is going to be in the boardroom at the library. Then over on the Kettle House on the north side, they've got their um, they they've got their pint night. So fifty cents of each beer sold is going to go to the it's a uh, beers for Great Burn. So I think it's the Great Burn it's Great Burn Wilderness area and surrounding area. So they're giving drinking beer to give back to that to help improve those areas. So that starts at five and goes until about eight. At the Missoula International School, they have adult Spanish that starts at five o'clock. Um, it'll be $225 for 12 weeks. It'll be on Wednesday, September 14th to December 14th, and but there'll be no classes on the 16th or 23rd of November. So you guys can kind of just look on the Missoula International School's website. I'm sure they've got one. Everyone has a website. And you can find out more information on there. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a beginning watercolor class starting at 530. It's for the beginning watercolors to explore, practice, and implement a wide array of techniques, topics, and subject matter. Um, at Traveler's Rest State Park, they've got a Lolo Creek dewatering. Um, it's called Linking the Evidence. And so what it is, is that they're going to be talking about, it's put on by the Lolo Watershed, watershed Group. And so they're going to be talking about important research information about the Lolo Creek and its watershed. So that'll be at Traveler's Rest State Park, 6717 uh, US Highway 12 West, out in Lolo, yeah. At the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a stained glass studio that starts at six o'clock, so you can uh, learn how to cut some stained glass and make your own stained glass project. Um, and if so, let's see, some tools are available, no supplies are provided, so you may have to provide your own. Um, and it's going to be on Wednesdays from the 14th of September to November 2nd from 6 to 9. It's only $86. And then we also have Beginning Spanish at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center starting at 6 o'clock. It's $71. Um, you will need a textbook, but it's not included in your tuition. We've got Public Jam at Imagination Brewing Company starting at 6 o'clock. That's for any, or, uh, any musicians to go down, not just bluegrass-oriented ones, to jam out. And the Zutan Arts Community Center has their glass fusing orientation class that starts at 6 o'clock. It's 20 bucks for people that are not members, plus the cost of glass. And they'll teach you everything that you need to know. And then once you go to this workshop, you can go into their glass fusing studio anytime you want to. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got an adult fiddle, beginning fiddle class that starts at 6 feet, 6.15. Um, no, prior musical, uh, no prior musical experience is necessary. Over at REI, they've got a map and compass navigation basics class. It starts at 6.30. Um, it's $30 for members, 50 bucks for non-members. Space is limited, so you can register by going to REI.com and then you will search on their classes. But it's just map and compass na navigation basics. Uh, they will provide compasses for you, but they also ask that if you can bring your own, bring your own. At the public library, they've got a second Wednesday book group at seven o'clock. They're reading, uh, they're discussing Empire of the Sun by J.G. Ballard in the boardroom. And then at Fairbridge Inn, the, the Missoula Quilt Guild has their monthly meeting. Uh, that's at 3803 Brook Street at seven o'clock on the second Wednesday of each month. Yeah. And then we have country dance lessons with Kathy Clark that starts at seven o'clock. It's only five bucks per lesson, and that'll be at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, <clears throat> And then there's a karaoke contest at the Eagles Lodge at 8.30. There's karaoke at the Badlander at 9. Uh, Mill Crate Wednesday at the Palace at 9. Karaoke at the Sunrise Saloon at 9 o'clock. Uh, and then that's what's going on for your events for Wednesday. Up next, we're switching gears. we got musical notes with ASAP Auto 9. Deep in the 100-acre wood where Christopher Robin plays, you'll find the enchanted neighborhood of Christopher's childhood days. A donkey named Eeyore is his friend, and Kanga and Little Roo. There's Rabbit, known as Long Ears, to Tigger, and Piglet, and there's Owl. But most of all, there's Winnie the Pooh. But of all of Christopher Robin's friends, our guest on today's musical notes is being singled out, known to the world as Piglet. There he is, little old Piglet. 
he's just a cute little thing with those little floppy ears and his little pink outfit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, to tell you a little bit about Piglet, Piglet is a fictional character from A.A. A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh books. Piglet is Winnie the Pooh's closest friend amongst the toys and animals. Now, Piglet first appeared on the scene in 1926. That far back, they had the more primitive versions of Piglet back then, but that's when Piglet was created in 1926. Most of the characters, including Piglet, is based on Christopher Robin Milne's stuffed animals. That's the concept of these characters here. And Piglet's adventures in the first book include hunting woozles, attempting to catch a, uh, catch a, a heffalump, <laughs> and uh, giving Eeyore a birthday with a popped balloon. But Piglet's heart's in the right place, you know. <laughs> so now if we can um, go to that uh, video, I'll do a narration here. If you look on the date here, it says February the 2nd. Basically, um, it was actually November 7th, and winter hadn't started yet, but Rabbit was the only one that had a calendar. So they wanted to know when winter was gonna come, and when they went into his house, the wind blew the calendar into pieces, so it went from November 7th to February 2nd. So everybody thought spring was coming, and so they couldn't find a groundhog, and so they looked for a gopher who got ticked off. What do you mean calling me a groundhog? I am a gopher, sheep, beep, 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 you know, whistling every time he talks. So the ground, I mean, the, the gopher goes away. So instead, they put a little teeth on Piglet. There's our friend right here. He's a little ticked off there, being called a groundhog. So anyway, they put some um, beaver teeth on Piglet. They throw him into the ditch. And if he can find his shadow, there's six more weeks of winter. So his hat falls over his eyeballs. And when Piglet comes out of the hole, he can't see, so they just think spring comes and, and winter had already disappeared when it hadn't. <laughs> so Piglet makes the prediction that spring's coming. Of course, the next day, winter comes, the snow falls, and Piglet's little prediction was wrong. So that's what the uh, video was about. And you can see all these other delightful pictures here with Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin and Piglet. And my final words on Piglet... Disney got a hold of it in 1968 in a movie called Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery because it was a blustery day in Hundred Acre Woods. So Disney's interpretation, they just improved on the pink outfit that Piglet already had. And um, Piglet loves beautiful things like flowers. He's very kind-hearted and he's also very neat and tidy. Now, Piglet made a cameo appearance in 1988 in the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> and he also appeared in the DreamWorks film B-Movie. And on that note, I will quit. Cool. Well, thanks, ASAP. Sure, just Thank a story on little old Piglet. Yeah, yeah. cute little Piglet. Oh, yeah. if, you ever, if you guys get a chance to watch the movie 12 Angry Men, the voice of Piglet is one of the 12 Angry Men. Oh, cool. Well, if you just watch it, like, you can, you're just like, that's him. Oh, that's like, cool. Because the, the actor who voiced him, you know, he sounded exactly like Piglet. Nice. And you oh. didn't even have to do a voice. I wasn't even aware of that. Wow, that's nice. interesting. Yeah, so that's if you neat. watch Trial of Angry Men, you'll see the voice of Piglet. And he's done a couple other movies along the way as well. Mm -hmm. So um, check that out. And um, we have a brand new art clip that'll probably, that'll end like in two weeks. Um, but it's the, at the Clay Studio. And I can't, I don't remember what it's called, but what you need to hear, just check it out.
back. You can catch that at the Clay Studio until September 30th. So now we have some events for Thursday. So let's see, let's find, find my stuff. Okay, starting at 10 a.m. on Thursday over at the Missoula Art Museum, they've got an art guide training. Um, so you can meet with the exhibiting artist, Courtney Blazon. She'll discuss her process and talk about the literary and historical influence of her work. Visual thinking strategies will be in introduced. Cool. Yeah. At the Montana Natural History Center, they've got their mini naturalist pre-K program uh, that starts at 10 a.m. Uh, and it, so it's just an emphasis on nature and exploration for little ones to uh, have them appreciate nature more. At the Children's Museum of Missoula, they've got milk jug sun catchers that starts at 11 o'clock. They're going to learn about recycling and they'll get creative and make a milk jug sun catcher. Yeah. At Child Care Resources, they've got a Child Care Resources tour. So what it is, it's a local nonprofit that helps families pay for child care, provide child care referrals, and provides training and coaching for child care providers. Um, so it starts at noon, ends at 1, lunch is provided. They would like you to RSVP 24 hours in advance. Um, so if you just type in Child Care Resources, I'm sure you'll come up with a website and the link. I didn't catch that when I was doing my research. Uh, at St. Paul's Youth Lutheran Church, they've got their Senior Roman Congregate Meals. It starts at 1 o'clock. You can call 728-7682 to reserve some space for that. And then at the Zootown Arts Community Center, they've got a Simple Mosaics class. It starts at 215. It's going to be from September 8th to October 13th, so it's already in full swing. Um, and so you can go by if you want to. I'm sure that you don't have to be right at the first day to register in order to keep going. But it's the, going to be the colorful process of making mosaics from start to finish. Yeah. At the Missoula Butterfly House, they've got a Bugs of War class. It starts at 3 o'clock. So it's an activity that highlights the often unseen connection between anthropods um, and the outcome of major military battles and campaigns. That's pretty cool. So they're going to um, do bugs as well as like military and combat. Um, Pair the two. Nice. Lego Club is at the Missoula Public Library at 3.30. And then there's spider feeding across the street at the Missoula Insectarium, also at 3.30. Um, there's a group drumming at 3.45 at the Missoula International School. Those are students. They'll learn um, drumming with basic rhythms and musical patterns and how to apply those songs in a group music experience. So that'll be Thursdays from 3.45 to 5.15. Eight weeks, so it'll be $135. Um, class begins September 15th. Yeah. At Imagination Brewing Company, they've got a nonprofit appreciation day starting at five o'clock. Um, it looks like um, it looks like you'll receive a half off of your first beer if you work for a nonprofit. There is a Frenchtown branch book club at the Missoula Public Library. Okay, no, in Frenchtown, there's a book club maybe sponsored by the Missoula Public Library. Um, you can contact them 626-2730 for more details. At the North Side Baseball Field, they've got a North Side versus West Side softball showdown that starts at six o'clock. So uh, the North Side is versus the West Side. So all the people that live in there and play softball, they just play against each other. So if you're interested in playing, you can call uh, 405-747-9158. Uh, yeah. So at the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. It's a gourmet tailgate grilling that starts at 6.30. It's $35. Um, and so what it is, they're going to be making uh, cougar gold cheese dip, uh, sous vide chicken wings, crispy no-fry JoJo-style potato wedges, as well as bison sliders, beer bath kielbasa, and kraut, uh, let's see, beer bath kielbasa and kraut, and dessert pizza. Yeah, nice. gourmet and tailgate in the same sentence. It's perfect. We're in Montana. Uh, at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got an introduction to calligraphy class that starts at 6.30. It's only $72, and it lasts from uh, the 15th of uh, September to the 13th of October. And then at the Yoga Fitness Center, they've got a new half-day yoga class that starts at 7. And at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a classic rock class that start also starts at 7. It's... $66, um, and so it's a acoustic guitar, and they're going to rock out to some of their all-time favorites, Classic Rocks. So it's from the 15th of September till the 20th of October, and it's only $66, and it'll be from 7 to 8.30 at night. The Eagles Club, they've got an open mic that's at 8.30, and then the Country Boogie Boys will be at the Starrise Saloon also at 8.30. Uh, open mic at the Broadway at 9, Dead Hips to the Bad Laner at 9. We have karaoke at the Dark Horse at 9. Letter B will be playing the Top Bat Lounge at 10. 
And then the Mendelssohn res Residency number three will be at the VFW, also at 10 o'clock. And then we have Escape, that'll be at Monks, that's at 10 o'clock too, and it's, I think it's a DJ. So that's what's going on in your community. Check out MissoulaEvents.net for more information about everything that I've talked about. You can also find more events at the University of Montana website, The Independent, or The Missoulian. But now we're switching gears, and I do believe that we've got some city council. Yes, we do have some city council, Noel McAvoy. Hi. Scott Rapp here to tell you all about some city council. Uh, but before I jump into stormwater utility, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the Missoula International School and the city of Missoula. Oh, so, cool. of course, if you guys don't already know that the city of Missoula and the Missoula International School are working on a partnership which involves the city of Missoula funding about forty to fifty thousand dollars with the International School to build a facility, not only for the International School but for many other programs. Um, that are educational, recreational, and uh, great. Nice. Just for the community and all that stuff. But of course, um, there is one um, um, person that disagrees with this particular thing, and this is what this first quote is. But this is Diane Lorenzen, and she's basically saying how much she thinks that you, um, the city and Missoula International School, you know, it, Missoula International School, well, yeah, she'll explain it a little more, but she di just definitely disagrees with this partnership for this reason. The I'm making are my own and do not represent the school board. According to the July 12, 2016 meeting minutes, the City Council is considering entering into a partnership with the Missoula International School. Missoula International School is one of 13 private schools in Missoula County. The City Council voted to spend $40,000 to study a joint project with the private school. The project would cost the city hundreds of thousands of dollars per year in lease payments to the private school. The city of Missoula has a great public school system and should not be spending taxpayer money to support a private school. MCPS has a number of very generous cooperative agreements with the city. MCPS leases the 13-acre peas farm to the city for a dollar a year. MCPS leases the Westside Park to the city for one dollar per year. MCPS leases the Whittier School to Head Start for one dollar per year. If the city is going to partner with schools, it needs to partner with Missoula County Public Schools, not one. All right, so mm -hmm. that's uh, that's what she had to say about that. That's a really good point. Because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, like private yeah. schools, those are funded by the people that go there, but yeah. public schools are funded by the city, so I don't understand. No, 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 public schools are funded by the state and by the, the state. federal government. And the federal government. Yes, so FDR then, basically was all the whole public funding mm. and schools and all that stuff. So okay. it's all, yeah, all about FDR. Okay, okay. Yeah, FDR did a lot. <laughs> but, um, Moving on, uh, that was just basically kind of like a, a public comment. There were only two public comments in the meeting that day. Um, and of course, I'm moving on to the next, uh, the, the, the main public hearing, which was talking about the city of Missoula is working on, um, wait, wait, it's okay. So John Wilson, um, he's with the uh, Devel Developmental Services, and he talks about a new drainage ordinance that will be implemented in part with an Environmental Protection Act, um, the EPA. For short, um, here's the background. Okay, I'll give you the background after this qu quick little quote that he basically kind of explains what this uh, storm water utility is all about. It's, uh, the federal EPA has placed a, a prime, a, you know, high level of importance on this, so that's the way the rules are written. Uh, we just uh, the larger cities. We just spent about a year and a half meeting with DEQ and EPA on a monthly basis. They uh, uh, accepted our concerns and uh, accepted a committee uh, that met to try to streamline the rules, uh, try to make them more practical. And uh, I, th I think that, th that we accomplished quite a bit, but it still has a, a lot of man hours for administrative requirements. Right. So basically, he just kind of says that this is going to happen um, one way or another. Um, because the EPA and the Mon Montana um, Department of Environmental Quality, and they, they will be required for additional uh, attention to a stormwater discharges within Missoula effective January 2017. So as soon as the next year starts, they, that is when we're supposed to start regulating our water, stormwater drainage. So of course, um, MDEQ is also requiring the city to hire a full-time dedicated stormwater coordinator um, stormwater facility maintenance and illicit stormwater discharge monitoring, among other duties, are currently being um, completed by various city staff as they have time to address it and will, when with the assistance of the Missoula Water Quality District, 
the upcoming regulation will, will require very specific tasks to be performed, including an educational component and public outreach, as well as an extensive pollution monitoring and record keeping. And of course, uh, the city wow. has been looking at other cities that have these policies in place, but they want to uh, they want to ease into it. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that they're uh, the okay. So you guys probably want to know how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost nine dollars a year for residential and twenty dollars a year for commercial. Mm, okay. That's how much the stormwater utility is going to cost. That's not And they bad. do it at a biannual rate. So okay. it's like. Four fifty for the first bill, and then four fifty. It's it, it, and it will be, and basically they explained it that it will be part of um, the um, I guess the sewer bill. So okay. if you have on a sewer bill, you'll see a new tagline that says four dollars and fifty cents dedicated to stormwater utility. So if you, this is basically um, what they're talking about. So of course uh, John Wilson he talks about how people um, might feel about this new utility, and this is how we how he responds. Uh, there's some heartfelt feelings of concerns about increasing rates and uh, I believe we have to do this uh, but I take those concerns very seriously yeah so that's just a nice little short little quote from him um, the next one is some public comment and the one of the um, public comment speakers is this is Sam Sill and he's a realtor and he uh, and he's talking about some of the concerns and of course the future monitoring of the storm utility as well let's take a look at that uh, the one thing that I would maybe suggest is to take it a, one small step further and remove structural alteration from the definition of development. It seems to be, um, you know, out of place and certainly beyond the scope of what the intent of this regulation is. And then, <clears throat> finally, the last two pieces that I wanted to talk to you about were in subsection 6. Uh, these regulations, uh, 6.5 and 6.9, essentially require a person who has a um, facility of any kind that may contribute to stormwater pollution or discharge or so on to undergo private monitoring and analysis of that runoff at their own expense. Um, you know, that is... Um, you know, not necessarily problematic on its face, but the problem that we see with those regulations is that there are no standards uh, to guide city staff in determining when this is necessary. Um, unless the city can provide some clear guidelines, these will be left solely to the discretion of staff, and that could lead to <clears throat> excuse me, inconsistent and arbitrary application of the standard, and certainly a lack of predictability to uh, uh, developers. I know um, John and I discussed that as well, and I think he's open to uh, trying to address that by providing some standards. I don't think he had time to write any up for tonight, but... We're a little over four minutes, Mr. Silk. Ah, uh, very good. Well, I've uh, reached the end of the, my comments here, but, you know, I think I would love to see <clears throat> the Council send um, Administrative Rule 112 back to the Public Works Committee so we can address some of these issues. Thanks. All right, so that was um, some of his issues with it as well. Um, the next part is, um, this is on John Jenkins, and he mentioned some of the payments uh, that are gonna be made to it and where the money is going to and what it is to create the stormwater um, utility. I don't, everyone cares about the water in Missoula. Uh, it's a junction of three rivers. Um, I, I find it surprising that we're just now dealing with this and at a time when, when uh, many property owners are verging on broke. Um, the economy's down, and uh, this is just one more thing, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. I also found it interesting in the figures there are $11,000 for a permit fee. Why do you need permission to do what's what's right for the environment, and why does it cost $11,000? Um, roughly $150,000 for the guide? That's an expensive book. Um, Pardon me, uh, 150,000 for the guide and the study. Um, 53,000 for the manual. That's a huge book. Uh, 150,000 for the, the book and the study. Many studies already exist. Well, are we capitalizing, or have we tried to capitalize on resources from the university, or or others that have been studying the water all along? Um, and then another 150,000 for the implementation. Now that I would expect to cost some some cash. Why is it almost as much just for the guide in the manual as it is for the implementation? Doesn't make sense. All right, so that's basically the, what, what I'm going to end the comments on. And uh, just uh, just so you guys know that the motion did pass because this is like a requirement from the EPA and the uh, Montana DEQ. 
So a lot of this was just like the city. Um, the way I kind of see it um, in this sense, it's not necessarily about, uh, um, let's say, uh, the, 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 the reason I'm coming up to this is like, if you think about it as in terms of like a car that you leave parked. Mm -hmm. If you leave a car parked for a while, you get tickets upon tickets, mm -hmm. and then they eventually tow you away. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of idea is that the EPA has basically mandated that Missoula get a storm water utility Otherwise, we'd be penalized. Mm. That kind of thing. That's how you kind of figure it. So it's kind of like it's EPA requirement. Montana DEQ is like is is enforcing it. So mm -hmm. the EPA was like, okay, Montana, you got to do this and the, this and that. And of course, I w was listening to a couple of other, uh, other points as well. But of course, Billings, Bozeman, they have their own water utility, but they're they have a more full implemented one. And the idea is that Missoula is kind of easing their way into it mm -hmm. to help. Uh, they already are helping people in terms of how much money is being done to initialize the stormwater utility. So hmm. interesting. So yeah, so, that's uh, yeah, kind we'll of like see how um, that develops. We'll see how that develops. Mm -hmm. And of course the motion did pass. It yep. was it was it was gonna basically pass anyways. Yeah, of course. If it's a requirement by the EPA then we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Um and then so it'll start January two thousand seventeen. Yep. Cool. Yep. They hope to well yeah that's 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 the, their hoping. Well they, they have to show like progress by January to January 1st, 2017. Oh, okay. So if they show, like, okay, here it is, it's in place, here's the ordinance, it's like, okay, you did it. And they just <laughs> leave us alone, they just walk away. It's like, uh, of course, yeah, it's monitoring, so the EPA demands, like, paperwork and all that stuff, mm -hmm. so they'll need to come up with figures and stuff about how much um, um, pollute, pollutants in the drainage. Nice. So, you know, I, I mean, the stormwater utility, it's just, you know, it's another thing to put yep. on your bill. Pretty much, as property taxes increase. Yep. So you can see that full meeting by logging on to uh, ci.missoula.mt.us, and you can see many more meetings and other stuff. And today is where they're having all sorts of wonderful meetings. So if you go up to this little tab up here, under your government, and then you go on down to City Council, and you click on Agendas, Webcasts, and Minutes, it brings you to this nice little page of a nice, uh, full of hyperlinks and links to uh, the agendas and videos that were played at the meetings and it tells you when the meetings start. So if you uh, look through there once in a while and you find something that uh, caused or uh, something that you really want to speak about, um, especially now since uh, the, the city uh, determined a public hearing for the gun ordinance. Mm -hmm. This is a gun regulation ordinance or it's like an update to the gun regulator ordinance. It's they're gonna set they set a public hearing for uh, September twenty sixth. Oh, so okay. September twenty sixth, which I believe is a Monday. It's the last Monday of this month mm -hmm. and that's when they're gonna be talking about uh, this gun ordinance. So nice. um, if your guys are up in arms, um, <laughs> uh, anyways but, um, you, you guys can um, talk about it on that particular day. Um, this has been going on for about 11 months now. They started talking about it last October, and they're going to um, continue talking about it um, and pro possibly vote on it this Monday. Cool. Great. So uh, if you have something to say against it, if there's one thing about it that you don't like, um, you can do it. And if you're all for it, it's it basically the gun ordinance basically... If it, Basically, basically, basically. Basically? Basically. Technically. So the idea of the gun ordinance is to regulate gun sa private gun sales between people. So mm -hmm. if I wanted to sell a gun to Noel, I need we a background check not only on her, but on myself. Yep. So that means I didn't need like a licensed gun thing. That's so basically the way it kind of like turns out to be, it'd be, it costs $50 for her and $50 for me. Mm -hmm. And that's how they get the background checks through the, like some kind of like system and whatever. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it's just going to slow down the process of, of selling guns to people because you can't, you know, that means, especially um, during the Ra the Reagan administration, the Brady Bill, that's mm -hmm. kind of prevented people from buying guns right away, but that's basically from gun owners. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, not gun owners, but gun shops and stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't just go to a gun shop and buy a gun right away, but before the 80s. So that's some background and some history. Um, they're not taking away guns, they're just regulating who gets them. So just think about it from that perspective and speak on it on September 26th. So that's that's a lot of the misconceptions that people have been having about this gun ordinance. All right, so um, I'm gonna um, ease out of city council and go straight into Hallmark or Bullmark. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have, a, we have a good one and they're nice and short. Uh, I, 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 try, I, I don't know, I try to, I mean, they're very vague. I'm gonna like that's that's the goal. It's trying to make them as vague as possible, so you guys determine whether or not it's a real or it's um, bullmark. So that's the game. Uh, I read a synopsis from a Hallmark original movie, or do I? And you have to determine whether it's Hallmark or bullmark. <laughs> All right. So here is here it is. Mira Simon has a 
definite idea of what her fantasy life entails. The perfect job, the perfect house, and the perfect man. After a few incident, um, after a few innocent April Fool's jokes, Mira's dream, dream life starts becoming a reality. Woo, what? That's weird. <laughs> um, and she soon realizes living her fantasy may not be all it's cracked up to be. Ooh. And it's called Lucky in Love. Ooh. Um, I'm going to say Bullmark. I'm going to say Hallmark. You say Hallmark? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What is it, Scott? It's Hallmark. Ooh. Ooh. Good job, Asa. Yep. Okay. Next one. All right. Next one up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Let's play. Two young people, a successful lawyer whose career is moving fast, and a free-spirited woman with a carefree approach to life um, meet when they are struck in a broken elevator. <laughs> Like, you haven't seen that one before. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, despite their very different lifestyles, sparks fly. But will love elevate them? Or will they try to go back... Or will they go back to the ground floor? <laughs> uh, let me read that again. But will love elevate them? Or will they go back to the ground fo- floor? <laughs> That's it. I'm not going to read it again. And the, and the movie's called Elevator Girl. Okay, okay. <laughs> you, lo- uh, you like the elevator? I think it's Bullmark. Oh. You think it's Bullmark? Yeah, I'm going to go with Bullmark. Ooh. Um, Whatever. I'm going to say Hallmark on this one. Oh, you're going to say Hallmark. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, it's Hallmark. Yay! Yeah, today it's a double nice. Hallmark dose. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, I did write that last line. Scott I did write. Piece. I did write the last line of that. Well, love elevator. Yeah, that's that pretty funny. Like that's it's like. It's great. That's the greatest synopsis ever. Yeah. Perfect, Scott. Nice. Well, uh, so we got 50 percent, fifty fifty. That's fine. That's good. Cool. It's good for us. It's Wednesday. It's fine. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. Great. I'm usually well, pretty good about pulling somebody. Yeah, that's pretty big. That was a really good. Really you did big. a really good job of being vague. Yeah, yeah. They're extremely vague. I, yeah. Well, they just copied and pasted. Yeah. And they're just like the shortest thing ever. Oh yeah. man, wouldn't it be so lame if I started to look at the Hallmark website? No, uh, you wouldn't know anything. I would know. <laughs> but well, you don't know do, the. You don't, I'm not gonna do that. You don't not, know, that's you don't know the titles of the movies until the day of. No, no, that's true. Yeah. So you. But I could just read through. <laughs> and just look at the titles. But I, I won't do that because that's that. no fair. Oh, yes, I will. Yeah, you won't. Oh, yes. No, you won't. I've got a photographic memory, Scott. No, you don't. I definitely no, won't remember no, it. Don't. But I won't do that because that's not fair and it wouldn't be as fun. You can try all you, mu- all you might. I'm not going to try. Yeah, wouldn't it? I know I'd yeah, win. Yeah, you'd probably have to. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. I don't think I have any more announcements. Oh, what's up? Um, it's Joel's show, Joel Barrett, our boss. His show starts pretty soon. Yep, That's- Missoula Live starts Monday the 19th at 4 p.m. They have a whole bunch of guests talking about this and that. Um, yep, and so that'll be on Channel 189. So look forward to that. We'll be back on Friday with more, you know, things going on in Missoula. Do we have any guests? Um, we're having a sports segment this Friday. Oh, is it starting yep. Friday? Yep. Oh, okay. Not Mondays? Yeah, well, they just said they want to do it this Friday, and then I, I, I'm going to try to convince them to do a Monday sports segment, because it would make more sense, because all the sports happen during the weekend. Yeah, it then... would make much more sense to do a Monday sports segment. So, we'll look forward to a Friday sports segment on Friday, um, as well as more community events, some new programming, musical notes, all the normal things with Wake Up Missoula. Yeah, and then you'll look forward to your weekend. Yeah. And if you want more information, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. And, of course, you can always go to MCAT.org if you want to get in contact with us. You can email us at MCAT at MCAT.org, or you can call us 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. We're always looking for guests to come on and talk about their upcoming events, cause, or rally. And, um, yeah, this you have to have an event that's coming up, and we can sit here and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for tuning in with us. For Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McAvoy. Here's ASAP Out and I, and we'll see you guys on Friday.